Okay, we're continuing on. Uh, before we do anything else, though, I did a couple of adjustments from the last video. And one of them was I did make my title a little bit smaller. And also, I did nudge the photo up a little bit. So if you actually go up to, and you want to kind of make sure your photo is in about the right place, it's going to kind of depend on how much white space you have up above your photo, uh, up above where the graphic is, how much that's pulled down. You, you can see mine's pulled down right to where the photo starts here. But if you go up to your ruler area, and you just click and drag, and I'm using, I have the um, main selection tool clicked on. And then I bring this down and align it with the top of that picture. You can see I get a, uh, up here where the Y is, it gives me a location. If you're around 13, 14, 15, that's a pretty good spot. And actually too, you can see now, I definitely have room for that caption to fit in better down here in that white space area so it's definitely not as crowded as it was and the other thing too that I did that I forgot to put on that file that I had uploaded was that bleed area that we put before so you, if you want to go ahead and put that in so you can make sure that you've got enough of a bleed for that graphic uh, file document setup and then you want to go to where it says bleed and slug and click on that and then put in one for your bleed and then click OK. All right, so back to our next step. I'm going to go to view, fit spread in window. And for our photo credits, we're also going to use the same style that we'll be using in the actual magazine. And that's going to be Gil Sands regular and nine point. So if you don't have this font on your computer, you can just use another uh, sans serif font, nine point. And so that takes care of our caption, except we are gonna add some color to it. And we're gonna come back here and highlight this caption and photo credit. We're going to go to swatches. Use our T tool and we're going to get the green, but you can see the green is a little light. It's not awful, but let's make it a little bit darker. So we're just going to double click on the green here and let's up the black a little bit to about 24. And now it just gets a little bit darker. Okay. So we can move on from <clears throat> from there. Our next step is going to be to, and I just noticed this as well, since I moved my photo, some of my blurb is cut off, so or intro. So if that happens to you, make sure to click on your text box and go to Object, Arrange, and Bring to Front. Okay. Okay, yes, yeah, so we're going to make the T also that bright blue color. So we can come back to our design and let's go to swatches, click on the T, and let's just use the blue in here because this is very similar to the blue that's over there. All right, so it looks real good. I think the only thing that we have left to do here is just make that multicolor border that's up at the top. So to do that, we're gonna make a gradient. So in our swatches box, we wanna go to this four lines, these four lines and click and choose new gradient swatch. And we're actually gonna make a gradient swatch that's a number of different colors. So on this gradient ramp here, we want to click on the white and we can just start with, let's start with yellow. So I'm just upping it to, uh, let's do about 82. Now I'm going to come over here a little bit and I'm going to click right on this ramp 
and I'm going to hit the option key on my keyboard and click and nothing's happening. There we go. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to click on that and I'm going to add some cyan and that's giving us a green and that's going to be the next color that we're going to have. Um, let's try to click about the same distance away and I'm going to add or actually subtract some yellow up the cyan and a little bit more so we've got 78, 01, and 42 that's going to give us a blue uh, option again let's go down on the black Let's go up on the magenta and the yellow. Let's go down on the cyan. Down on the yellow, up on the magenta. Oops. Okay, there we go. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, so 6, 72, 19, and 20. And let's do one more here. Let's do like a lightish pink. And then our final color, this very last one that we click on, this is just going to give us options that are already in our swatches. So let's do a red and click OK. Now this gradient is actually going to, that we're going to have here is going to give us all of these different colors. So let's go to our rectangle frame tool and we, we want to bleed this off because this is going to go up at the top here. We want to bleed this in, at least into the bleed area and we could actually go past that to, uh, on both sides just to be safe and on the top. Okay, and we're going to fill this with that gradient. Let's take a look at how that looks. Okay, so that is a linear gradient, and the gradient that I used on the other one was actually a radial gradient. So let's um, come back over here and see how the, let's go to new gradient swatch, and we're going to try radial. Yeah, I think I like that better. Okay, so we're going to use the radial. Now, please save your finished file and submit for a grade.